Steelers are a legit threat in the AFC. Eric Allen is back. The question for you. Yeah, I do. I do. I think uh, defensively they've gotten on the right track. Uh, Harrison has been a great I know. I mean, he a just, whole new person. Oh, he was just beasting the other <laughs> yes. day. And just that pressure up front really helps the secondary, of course, and you have to have that great balance. But it's all about the offense, and it's not the Steelers of old, what we're accustomed to seeing them running the football and paying, playing power football and running guys over. It's about that passing game in Big Ben, and we've talked about Antonio Brown, just tremendous, tremendous number one receiver in the National Football League right now. Uh, and then Martavis Bryant stepped up, and you have other guys who are fulfilling their roles. But as long as you have a guy like Big Ben, who we all have so much respect for, his toughness, his ability to the pump fake is really a, a big part of his game plan because he has such big hands. He's able to get that ball out in front of his face. So if you're a defensive back, no matter how good or bad you are, once you see that ball cross the face mask, you're prone to try and jump the route. All of a sudden, that guy's not there. Big Ben's ability to pull that ball back, make a play outside the pocket is amazing. This team is really legit. At the beginning of the year, I thought they were really going to struggle at this point. But at the halfway point, most of the time, you are who you are. Mm. And if you're a pretty good football team able to win games in the end, it becomes about matchups. Wow. And I'm not sure if anyone they face on their football team the rest of the way has enough corners on their mm -hmm. schedule to match up with all these great guys. And then Le'Veon Bell is yeah. also a tremendous threat. He can catch the ball at the backfield and go to crazy moves. So I think this football team is legit and for real. They're right behind huh. the Broncos and the Patriots. Yes, Stephen A., uh, Eric Allen says you are who you are midseason and that they are a legit threat in the AFC. Your take? I respectfully disagree. And I'm a diehard mm. Steelers fan that Skip Bayless knows better than anybody. Uh, I, before I go uh, say what I'm going to say, I want to give major props to Le'Veon Bell. We all know what situation he got himself in. Uh, Skip Bayless at the beginning of this season with him and LeGarrette Blunt traveling to a preseason game in Philadelphia. He came on my radio show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio just last week, and he did an outstanding job. I wanted to give him props for that. Having said all of that, let me be very, very clear. I don't believe in this Steelers team because I don't believe in their defense. This offense is big time. It can throw punches with anybody. Big Ben, as far as I'm concerned, is cementing his status as a future Hall of Famer. Uh, he's going to do it again next week because I believe they have the Jets on their schedule, which might as well be a bye week at this stage in point. Uh, but when you look at him, when you look at Antonio Brown, when you look at this kid Wheaton, who's developed into a, the legitimate bona fide number two receiver, Martavius Bryant, I'm very, very impressed with him. The combination of LeGarrette Blunt with Le'Veon Bell, giving you some semblance of a running game, an offensive line that's relatively experienced, that's been playing with each other the last several years, and are doing, you know, are capable of doing a relatively good job of protecting Big Ben Roethlisberger. I definitely think they could put up some points. But Skip Bayless, Eric Allen, do you know the primary reason why I don't consider the Steelers a threat when I talk about their defense? Because right around this time last year, they had started out 0-4, won a couple of games, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden had a loss, and then they ran into New England. And what did Tom Brady do? Dropped 55 on them. Because this is what the Steelers' defense tends to do. They bend a lot. They don't always break but they bend too much and ultimately break against elite teams. And when I think about the playoffs, which is what I'm measuring them by, I don't see them making some noise because I don't see them being to a team that can stop Denver nor New England. Could they give Cincinnati some trouble? Yes. They clearly could give Baltimore some trouble. Absolutely. San Diego, we find out that even though their defense is formidable, they're relatively fluky because of what am I supposed to think about you when you lose 37 to nothing to Miami? No matter how good Miami is, they ain't 37 points better than you. That's just embarrassing, okay? So I look at that, and even though they did what they did to Andrew Luck and those boys, I just have questions when it comes to Denver and New England. If you want to have this discussion and the question is going to be are the Steelers the third best team in the AFC, then I'd say arguably, okay, I'm willing to have that discussion, but I'm not willing to put them on the pedestal of Denver or New England because I know there's no way in hell they're going to stop Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. Despite, or even if Shazier wasn't, wasn't hurt and his ankle healed and, you know, and, and, and Ike Taylor came back and mm -hmm. you didn't have to rely on Gay and McCain and those boys in the secondary, I'm still not sold on Dick LeBeau's defense in Pittsburgh. I'm just not sold. I'm with you, Stephen A. Smith. Although 
I am willing to concede that Pittsburgh's offense has risen into the same echelon with Brady's and Peyton's. Yes. I think it's just as dangerous. That's what I was saying. Because of the emergence only in the last three weeks of Martavis Bryant. Mm -hmm. Came from nowhere. Not even, he, he was nowhere to be seen. And all of a sudden he's active out of nowhere. Boom, boom, boom. Starts catching touchdown passes. What do you have? Two more last night? Yep. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, that made everybody better because I remind you, they went to Baltimore, what was it, week two, and they scored a total of six points. Yeah. And Antonio, and I love Antonio. I've been pushing him for maybe the best wide out in football, but he caught seven balls that night for 90 yards at Baltimore, and they managed six points and lost 26-6. to six. Then they go to Cleveland, and you think, oh, you could have your way. Nope. You, you, he, he got seven for 118 in that game, and they managed 10 points and lost 31-10. to 10. He needs help. He needs yeah. others to free him up because I do think you can contain him with double teams. But all of a sudden, if it's Martavis and then it's Wheaton mm -hmm. and, and then it's Heath Miller and then it's Matt Spath, you know, like, it's like what? Where, where did these people come from? Yeah. <laughs> and when all of them are catching touchdown passes and one, two, three, four, five different people caught touchdown passes last night, six total, Man, that's hard to defend. And, and I didn't even mention Le'Veon, who's hard to defend catching the football as right. well as running the football. It, very impressive. But, again, when you look at the schedule, and the question was, do we think they're legitimate contenders? Yeah. And the question is yes. And if you heard what I said, I put them right behind Denver and the Patriots. But if you look at the rest of the schedule, I don't see any elite quarterbacks on yep. the rest of the schedule. I don't see teams that Dick LeBeau can't scheme against and make things happen well, defensively. I don't see a team... I mean, you know, could you make a case they could wind up with home field advantage in the playoffs then? Are they on that kind of roll? No, they're not on that kind I, of roll. I mean, role. are we Again, looking at 13 and 3? I, I believe they're going to win their division. I, I don't think that Cincinnati, hey Kansas City, or Atlanta, they play. Saint, they play New Orleans, but again, they play them away at home. So yeah. we know Drew Brees is a different yeah. player. Sure. So again, when you start to look at who they're playing, they don't play a quarterback who's going to be as good as Big Ben. So I think that's really the they got, key they've here. They got seven. They've, they've got seven games left. We've got the Jets, the Titans, New Orleans at home, at not home. on the road. Right. Since, uh, since in, at Cincinnati, at Atlanta, Kansas City, and the Bengals at home. As far as I'm concerned, these are seven games left. The Steelers should win five. You're talking about an 11-5 record. I see New England winning 12. I see Denver winning at least 12. And the question is, again, when we're talking about the, 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 the Steelers being a legit contender, well, what's your definition of that? To me, if you're talking about making a playoff, sure. If you're talking about being one of the top three teams in the AFC, sure. If you're talking about whether or not they have a real big-time legitimate shot of beating New England or Denver, I don't believe in this defense. I totally believe in this offense. I do not believe in this defense, particularly this secondary. That is my problem with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's why I don't consider them a legitimate threat. They're a playoff caliber team, and I'm proud of Mike Tomlin, but they are not a legitimate threat as long as that defense is allergic to anything resembling the steel curtain, especially even last night when they honored um, Mean Joe Green. Yep. All right, uh, Antonio Brown leads the NFL with receiving yards, 996. Beast. He is a beast. So far this season, you're number one. Yes. Uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate Always. it. Always. Coming up next, Ole 